G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Welcome to today's edition. Now I do have my SharePoint hat on, so it's fair to say that today's edition is going to be focused on SharePoint. Now we're going back to a little bit of SharePoint 101 here, where we're going to take a look at how to utilize uh, metadata inside of document libraries and then combine that with creating views of that document library and then ultimately building a little dashboard so that we can navigate our users and make it easy for our users to find documents that they are looking for when they come to your site. So let's dive in and get things set up. Alrighty, so let's get cracking and start building. This is what we are going to build a document library with a few custom bits of metadata or, or columns here that we're adding, and then we're going to create some views. So here, what we're looking at is just an example of a policies and procedures document library. So let's jump back to the homepage here and we'll create a new document library. So we'll go new document library. Let's call this one control documents. We'll create that blank library and we are good to go. You can see we've got our default metadata modified and modified by. Let's start by adding a column. So let's take a choice column here and we'll call this one category and we'll use uh, finance, we'll use HR, we'll use IT and we might use another department uh, called operations. So we've got our, our categories, let's click OK, and now let's continue and we'll add another, another column. So the next one we might do is a review date. So let's go date and time, we'll click next. Let's go review date, uh, we'll leave everything else as is, we'll click OK, and we are good with our review date. Next one, let's choose a document type. So we'll choose choice again, we'll go next. Let's go uh, document type. We'll go policy because this might uh, contain multiple different types of documents. Let's go procedure. Let's go guide. Um, and we might also go work instruction. All right, so we'll go work instruction. So we're now good to go. We've got our document types. Let's hide these modified and modified by columns because we don't really need that at the moment. So let's go hide this column. Let's go modified by uh, column settings and we'll hide this column as well. So now we've got a category, we've got a review date and we've got a document type. So next thing we're gonna do, let's actually just populate this document library. So I'll grab some, some uh, default, doc some demo documents here. We'll just grab a few. We'll select a stack of them here. We'll drag and drop them into the library and then we're good to go. We can see that they're uploading. 10 items uploading. There we are, we are coming in. I'm just gonna edit these in grid view here. So I'm gonna select a category. Let's go finance for these ones. We'll go um, a different category here. Let's go HR. Uh, and then we might choose operations for the last ones. Let's set a review date. Now I'm just gonna set the review date the same for all of these, all right? But obviously different documents and different types of documents could have different review dates. Let's choose the document type here. So we'll go policies for these. These ones are procedures. And then we've also got a few guides along the way here as well. So I'll exit out of grid view. And now all of a sudden, we've got a nice looking engaging document library. Now the beauty about these uh, these columns or this metadata is that we can then start to slice and dice our documents. So think of a document library with thousands of documents in it. We don't want to present users with a flat list of documents. So using these uh, headers across the top here, we can say, right, I'm only looking for finance documents. We'll apply that. And there we've got all of our documents that have been class or tagged with the term finance. So let's build on top of that. So let's create a new view. So from our view drop down up here, you can see that we've always got a default all documents view, but let's create and craft our own custom ones. So let's call this one finance documents. Let's create that. All right, it's a public view, everybody's got access to it. So you can see that it's been changed to finance documents. Let's now filter 
by finance. Again, we're only shown the finance documents. Let's save this view now and we'll save it as finance documents. Now what we'll be presented with is two. So we've got all documents and then we've also got finance documents. Now what about if we do that on the document type? So let's create a view that just shows us uh, procedures, all right? So let's create a new view. Let's call this procedures. We'll go create. Then on the document type column, let's go filter by procedure. We'll go apply. You can see that we've got our new little filter pill here. We can see what, uh, what documents are being returned. And now let's save this view as procedures again. And now we've got our procedures view. So we've got all documents, which is everything. We've got our finance documents, which is just based on the category column. And then we've also got our procedures view, which is based on the document type column, right? Now, how do we create a little dashboard so that we can just get users to, uh, to navigate to what they want to start from? So every single view that we create in a document library has its own unique URL. So we can see up here in this address bar, I've got this URL here. So what that means is on any SharePoint page, I can edit this and I'm gonna use the Quick Links um, web part as an example here. So let's use the Quick Links and I'm going to edit this Quick Links here. I'm gonna say um, all finance documents as the title like so. I'm going to choose a different icon. So let's find a document as our icon here. So we'll go document. And then let's have a look. This one looks pretty good. All right. So let's choose that icon. And we will give it a description. Find all finance documents. Let's give that a description like so and we are good to go, except we need to provide a link, right? So remembering that our views have its own URL. So I'm just going to open up this site again. I'm gonna go into control documents and I'm gonna navigate my way to that particular view. So we're creating a little tile for finance documents. So I'll choose this, this view here. I'll jump up to the address bar. I'm going to copy this. I'll jump back to our Quick Links web part. I'm going to change the link here. So I'm going to say from link and I'll paste the URL of that view in that box and I'll go OK. What about the other view that we've got? So we've got another view that we call procedures. Let's copy this URL, jump back to the Quick Links web part. Let's change the link, we'll go from link, we'll paste our link in there, and we'll click add. Let's give it another little logo, right? So let's give it an icon, let's give it uh, the graph symbol here, and we will click okay. We'll scroll down to the bottom, we won't worry about a description on this one, and let's republish. So what that means now is we've created this tiny little dashboard here. We've got a document library, we've got thousands of documents in it, even hundreds of documents in it that have been now uh, classified or tagged with certain pieces of metadata. And now when a user comes to our site, they've got a little quick links dashboard to say, right, I'm looking for finance documents. Let's click on these, these, this link here and automatically they're directed to that view called finance documents. Now let's just jump back to the homepage, you can see I haven't changed the label here. So that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this and we're going to say procedures. Let's republish and then we can click on procedures and we are taken directly to that view called procedures. So by combining both metadata and creating custom views, and then directing users using the Quick Links web part, for example, you can create a really nice user experience so that people can find what they are looking for. They're not confused about where do I go to access stuff. Uh, you can create that for them. And within 
10 minutes, what we've, we've, uh, what we've got there is a nice outcome for the end users when they're visiting your site. So I hope that brings you some value today. There's a lot of different applications or ways to apply what you've just seen. Um, so take that, implement it into your uh, document management uh, architecture, and then create some amazing experiences for your users. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next edition.